from the makers of Cold Water Omo. My dear Steed, I'm sure that you must have been personally recommended to come here. Well, I told you, Mr. Habitat, my interest in your burial concern is not personal. I've come to investigate the death of a gentleman who arrived here a few days ago. His body was brought by rail. You have admitted that you remember him. Well, I have told you so. Yes, indeed, a most fortunate body. He was sent to our most exclusive section, the Paradise Plot. I see. Well, I wonder if you'd be so good as to give me more particulars. Oh, willingly, willingly. But would you not like to see the grounds? I mean, they're the most well cared for in the whole country. Modeled on American lines, of course. So advanced. But one must hand it to our American friends in these matters. They're so much more alive than we are, aren't they? This way, Mr. Steed. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel... The Avengers. in which John Steed and Emma Peel find out more about Helen Pritchard's strange illness, and Steed follows through on an idea which becomes... A Grave Charge. It was basically all mother's fault. It started with the appointment of old Croker Way's goose as head of a new department formed to investigate strange and inexplicable happenings. Mother's vanity was hurt. He thought his own department more than capable of covering such cases. And so, when lovely Helen Pritchard was found suffering from loss of memory in a field near Bury St. Edmunds, Steed and Mrs. Peel were called in to clear up the mystery. Steed found that Helen Pritchard remembered very little of what had occurred and could only recall a man who was dead and connected him with a coffin and a train. Steed found out the night train upon which Helen had been traveling was taking a dead man to a certain burial ground, the Happy Meadows burial ground. This way, Mr. Steed. You will note how well arranged everything is. All the graves, the headstone. Well, it's certainly well uh, <coughs> laid out. So this is the most exclusive section, the Paradise Plot. Ah, Paradise found at last. Good morning, Tom. Ah, morning to ye, Mr. Happy Man. Chap. Hey? Chap. Oh, never mind. Are we keeping you busy, Tom? Oh, I got to keep digging away, you know. Got to be ready for this afternoon, three o'clock. Ah, yes, yes, I recall. Nathaniel Loss. Very sad, disappointing. Mm, dead loss, in fact. Come, Mr. Steed. This is what I wanted you to say. Good boy, do we, Mr. Happy Child. Here we are. Here's this the chap who arrived by train. It says, Jonathan Jupp. Are you sure this is the one? Well, of course. We can't afford to make mistakes in this business. Jonathan Jump. Well, just where have I heard that name before? And quite recently. At the hospital, Emma Peel was concentrating on getting some sense out of Helen Pritchard. She sat with her and Captain Cordell going over the whole thing once again. Talk to us, Helen. Tell us everything you can remember. A train. I was on a train. Very good. Now, you you still remember your name? Helen. Helen Pritchard? That's excellent. Now, you're Helen Pritchard. You're on a train traveling somewhere. Now, where, Helen? Where are you going? I, I don't know. It's all right. Leave that for a moment. Something happened on the train. You fell out. You tripped. Did you fall, Helen? Train. Train. Train, train, train. 
Not much progress so far, Mrs. Beale. No, I find it rather worrying. We've got her so far and the mind just won't go any farther. Mm. She doesn't want to know any more. She'd sooner stay in this state. It's less painful than remembering. May I try something? Oh, hello, Steve. Back again? Hello, Mr. Steed. What do you suggest, sir? There's no progress. Well, I've got something here that might just strike a few chords. Photographs? Of whom? Never mind. You won't recognize the person, but she just might. Helen, Helen, I want you to look at these pictures. Tell me Mm -hmm. if you recognize anyone. Helen Pritchard registered what she was asked. She took the photographs and began to go through them. She came to one that made a violent impression upon her. She dropped the photographs. Oh, oh, no, no, no. You know this man? You've seen him? His name is Jonathan Jupp. Do you know him? Yes, he's dead. He's dead on a train. Peter. Peter? Peter who? Peter. Peter. My dog. And that man. That man. Oh, no. Steed realized that the last scream Helen gave was different. It was a scream of recognition as she stared yet again at the photograph of Jonathan Jupp. Her mind had cleared. She sat straight up in bed. I, I remember. Here, Helen, take it easy. Drink this water. Thank you. It was late. I had my dog Peter with me on the train. He was traveling with me. But he had to spend the night in the guard van. I was all ready for bed in my sleeping car. But I wondered if Peter was all right. He, he could be hungry. Or knock his water over. Anything. I, I wanted to be sure. And so I went along the corridor to the guard van to find out. It was dark. The whole train was asleep. I made my way along the dimly lit corridor and into the guard van. There was Peter. So pleased to see me. Oh, oh. oh now, now, Peter. There, there, that's good oh. dog. There, I brought you some food. Look, here you are. That's it. I've got plenty of water. Good boy. I knew that there was a coffin at the back of the guard stand, but the knowledge didn't scare me. Not at all the spooky type. But I was aware of it all the same. I told myself that dead men can't hurt you. I put Peter down near his box, patted him. Be a good dog. Go to sleep. And turn to go. Then I thought. It was him, the man in this photograph. I'm quite sure of it. This is a man, and he is alive. Mother listened to Steed's story in complete silence, and then said, Do you believe her? Well, it sounded very convincing, the way she told it. Nevertheless, nevertheless she is suffering from concussion, there was a coffin on the train. She admits seeing it. The rest could be a figment of her imagination and hallucination brought on by her injuries. Agreed. Except for two things. One, she did pick out Jupp's photo. Mm, granted. And two, Jonathan Jupp. He was a financier. Of course, I remember him now. Involved in some shady deal or other, wasn't he? He was about to be prosecuted for fraud when he died of a heart attack. Convenient. Very. It makes one wonder if it wasn't too convenient. 
Now, if he was alive in that coffin... But you've seen his grave. Uh, his grave, yes. But not inside it. Exactly. All right. I'll get an exhumation order at once. And that was why, some hours later, Steed presented himself again at the office of Mr. Happy Chap, whose appearance hardly lived up to his name. I won't pretend that I like this, Mr. Steed. I won't pretend that I like it at all. None of us do, Mr. Happy Chap, but it has to be done in the interest of the law. We'll do it with the utmost discretion and respect. But what about the grass? I mean, this is ab it's absolutely ruined it. Oh, all right. Very well, then. I'll, I'll find Tom and Bob and... Let's get the whole thing over with. Later, Steed looked down at the shrouded body of Jonathan Jupp, who lay peacefully in his coffin. Happy chap, furious, stood by his side. Well, Mr. Steed, satisfied. Satisfied and mystified. Well, thanks, Happy chap. I just wanted to make sure he was here. Well, really? Oh, this is the end. Mrs. Peel was feeling quite confident that the case would soon be over. Helen Pritchard's story would be confirmed. Jonathan Jupp would be exposed as a man who had plotted his own death to escape arrest. And all would be solved. Easy as that. She got some magazines and started to make some phone calls. At that very moment, on the fire escape outside Helen's window, a large, burly man was forcing an entrance. Just a little more. Watch it. Helen, from the bed, gave a startled scream. Ah! Who are you? What do you want? You. The man's large hand went over Helen's mouth, stifling her cries for help. With the other hand, the man brought up a gun to level at her head. No! The door opened swiftly. Mrs. Peel came in. She took him the scene as a glance, flung the magazines at the man's face, and hurtled forward across the room, crashing him against the wall. The man yelled, slid down the wall into a heap, shot with his own gun. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Speed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omen.